Thank you, David. Good morning, church. Welcome to Faith Lutheran on this Father's Day morning. Happy Father's Day to all of you fathers and for all of you uh, paternal mentors. I know uh, even if you're not a father, uh, regardless of your gender, you may have provided some paternal oversight, some protection and some nurturing and for that, we give thanks to God. Of course, uh, Jesus referred to God Almighty as Abba, Father. And today, we especially celebrate our eternal Father, who is so loving, kind, and uh, who sustains us in every way and promises us a bright future. So happy Father's Day to Almighty God, right? <laughs> every day. Or, and my wife tells me that Father's Day is every day, so, you, you know, that's good to remember, too. A couple of uh, announcements just before we get started. Next Monday at 1030, uh, we will have a very special memorial service here in the sanctuary for the Reverend David Wagner. Uh, Pastor Wagner served this congregation uh, during a time of interim, uh, during uh, the, uh, the time of the pandemic. Uh, he was the first one to get our... Uh, to work with leaders in the church and others to get our uh, worship service broadcast online. So he helped sustain and nourish people uh, during that time of uh, the plague. Uh, he also uh, served uh, many congregations here in Southwest Florida, in the Florida Bahama Synod, uh, but also is indigenous uh, from the Midwest and served in New Jersey as a hospice chaplain and uh, when I went up to New Jersey to do uh, his uh, funeral uh, shortly after he died, I was reminded of the great work he did with so many families uh, in helping them during such a difficult uh, time. So we celebrate uh, on that day a wonderful, kind man, a beloved child of God, and also a pastor of the church. Uh, we will have participation from the Metropolitan, uh, not Metropolitan, the Florida Bahamas Synod Office. Uh, the Reverend uh, Rob Rose will be here, assistant to the bishop, uh, to preside over Holy Communion. We will have other clergy, too, from our conference present. And uh, we ask that everyone from this congregation, if you're available, to come here on Monday at 1030 to celebrate Pastor Wagner's life and eternal life. So thank you for that. Uh, our VBS, uh, if you know of any um, young people, uh, please get the word out. Uh, we're closing registration. Uh, we have uh, about 25 kids, I think, so far uh, scheduled to uh, join us. Um, we're going to have counselors from Luther Springs here, and that program will go from July 22nd through the 26th. So please see if you can add that. Um, there's some announcements about flowers and other things, and I just would like to remind you also that uh, we have this wonderful ministry, uh, and we basically do the whole thing on Thursdays. It's our um, food pantry, and no matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, uh, there is room for everyone to help out. We just ask that you come with your best attitude, and you're full of joy as you serve. That's the only requirement, right, Sandy? joyful service uh, so uh, there's we receive a truck from all faiths food pantry in the morning on thursdays uh, that usually arrives at like nine o'clock we do an offload we stage everything and then in the evening we have distribution uh, from uh, five o'clock to six thirty uh, we served over 225 people this past week over 100 families uh, and they eat for multiple days, and uh, it really is a uh, beautiful expression of the gospel in tangible form. It's us uh, providing some mercy ministry, but also uh, providing hospitality. Uh, our, the folks that come here, our neighbors, we don't look at them as somebody we, uh, we give handouts to. We look at them as they are our brothers and sisters. And we are privileged to give them a hand up, perhaps. Uh, but we also benefit from them greatly by uh, them enriching our lives. So be part of this ministry, uh, especially during the summer. We can use your help. I think that's all that I have by way of announcements that I need to share this morning. 
unless somebody has something that I'm forgetting? I don't think so. Okay, without further ado, then I invite those of you who are able. Oh, I need to tell you. So Cliff, can you wave to everybody? So our brother Cliff uh, scared us on Sunday last week uh, because uh, he uh, decided to, you know, need an ambulance. But uh, the good news is he is fine. He's doing great. And uh, with God's help, he will continue to keep us, to put us in stitches for many years to come. As you know, uh, Cliff is a professional comedian, but he's also one of the newest members of Faith Lutheran. So uh, Cliff, again, can you wave to everyone? Uh, we received him uh, by proxy when we, we were saying, uh, receiving the rest of the new members last week, uh, while you were en route to the hospital. That's how faithful we are, Cliff. We knew you were going to pull through when you were going to be here. So thank you for being resilient, and thank you for blessing us and making us laugh, too, from time to time, right? Well, we're going to keep them up, all right? So at this time, I invite you, if you're able, to stand. Uh, we're going to continue with the confession and hear God's words of forgiveness for us. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. Holy God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and you are nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. And through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth, that we may bear your truth and love those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. 
Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Sandy. A reading from Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. Word of God, word of life. Thanks. We read verses from Psalm 92 responsively. The righteous shall spread abroad like the cedar of Lebanon. The righteous shall spread abroad like the cedar of Lebanon. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night, in the psaltery and on the lyre, and to the melody of the harp. For you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I shout for joy because of the works of your hands. The righteous shall spread abroad like the cedar of Lebanon. The righteous shall flourish like the palm trees and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent that they may show how upright the Lord is, my rock, in whom there is no injustice. The righteous shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. A reading from 2 Corinthians. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So that whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him, for all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. For if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day. And the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. For when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it's sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. So there was a woman who wanted to um, surprise her husband for his birthday and get a brand new wardrobe, this big armoire. So, of course, she goes to Ikea, and she finds the perfect large armoire. And she brings it home, and she sets about the task of assembling it, reads all those directions, puts it together in all of its intricacies, is standing there admiring her work and the beautiful piece of furniture, and then a bus goes by in front of their house. As the bus rolls by, the thing comes apart, and is completely destroyed. She has no idea what happened. She followed the directions. So she goes at it again, looks at the directions, makes sure, assembles it. It's perfect again. Again, she's relieved. A bus goes by, and it falls down. Now she's in tears. So she calls Ikea. And Ikea says, oh boy, you're lucky. The uh, Swedish carpenter that designed this armoire happens to be here in the United States at our store and I'm going to send them over. He said, I'm happy to go there. He designed it. So in comes Sven and there he is swashbuckling the way he looks and he's examining the, uh, the directions, the pieces on the floor and he says, okay, assemble it. So she assembles it again with great care. It looks wonderful. The bus goes by and it falls down again. So Sven is determined to figure out what happens. This time he helps her assemble it. They put it together perfectly. And he decides he's going to go inside and closes the door so he can see exactly what happened when the bus comes by. Just then the woman's husband busts through the door and says, honey, I've been getting texts from the neighbors. There's a strange man in the house, and his Volvo's in the driveway. She doesn't even have an opportunity to say anything. He goes from room to room, looking, opening closet doors. He comes, he sees the brand new armoire. He opens the doors, and he says, what are you doing in here? And Sven says, would you believe I'm waiting for the bus? What do you think, Les? It's unbelievable what God does in and through creation, in and through us. It's always a surprise beyond our expectations. And we need surprises like that because life is extremely hard. In the lesson that Sandy read for us, the first lesson, we are reminded of a feeling of desperation among the Israelites. 
Babylon had come into Jerusalem and destroyed the city and destroyed the temple, laid it to utter waste, took away the people and brought them all the way to Babylon, kidnapped them. The people had no hope. And yet the prophet here is singing and talking about how God can take the tenderest of sprouts and move that sprout and nurture that sprout and cause it to grow as a great cedar of Lebanon. Sometimes we doubt the potential and the action in our lives or in our faith community or in the world. We think it's all up to us. And if we're not doing the work, we're lost. But nothing could be the furthest from the truth. The biblical witness reminds us over and over again that God is at work, sometimes in spite of our best efforts which are often corrupt and broken to begin with. In the book, Refugee of Faith, by Deborah Reinstra, she writes about uh, the eruption at Mount St. Helens in 1980. After the eruption, 1,300 feet of the top of Mount St. Helens was destroyed. It was shortened. But there was a new crater of a mile and a half. The surrounding area was covered with ash. Hot, molten ash fell everywhere and destroyed the surroundings. Scientists at that time thought it would take many lifetimes before any type of life would return to that mountain. What they didn't know then, but what they know now, is that there were small, tiny places that even though after the eruptive blast occurred, there were small places that that ash didn't find. In the lee of a tree, or in the lee of a giant boulder. There was a little bit of moss, or a small fern growing. Or underneath a rotted log, there was a tunnel of a bowl. And in less than 40 years after the blast, that whole mountain was restored to life. Now it's 44 years, and it's thriving. There is all sorts of flora and fauna, and it's restored to a new kind of beauty. That work wasn't done by the Forestry Commission and people planting seeds and cultivating that ground. That was God's work of regeneration, of rebirth, and new creation there on that mountain, witnessed by others. It is God who is active in our lives, even when we feel burnt out, even when we feel as though the great disaster has taken from us everything. God is still working with the most tender pieces of us, us as individuals and us as a community, in order to do something new and wonderful. During 9-11, the towers came down and destroyed everything in the area. I was there every single day to pray with the people who were looking for loved ones whom many would never be found. But if you go there today, you'll see in the center over where the memorial is on ground level, there is a tree, and it's called the survivor tree. It's a kind of pear tree. And it was right there in the epicenter, right near the two towers, 
And although it was burnt and twisted and crushed during the recovery on the pile, they saw some life and they brought it to the Bronx where it was allowed to continue to heal. And in 2010, it was replanted. And now it's thriving. And every spring, it blossoms with these gorgeous pear blossoms to remind us again of the resilience of life and how God is the author of life, the one who is bringing something new about always. And even from death can bring life. For many of us who are grieving, and I know we're grieving many griefs, many of us are grieving our brother Wally, who just died recently. We don't know exactly how our hearts are going to heal. But with God, there is power of restoration for us and for all who mourn. So we too can thrive. But sometimes we need a little hand up, right? Sometimes we don't realize the potential that's in us and we doubt that God really has anything good to do in and through us, maybe. Well, in New York City, there's this great designer and he's a TikTok uh, uh, sensation. His name is uh, Matt, uh, Max, uh, Kamatsky, Max, Max Kamatsky, and you can, you can Google Max Kamatsky and you'll see, or go to Instagram and you'll see all of his threads and everything he does on TikTok. Anyway, what Matt does, uh, Max does, he goes around and he sees in New York City, my hometown, there are flyers everywhere. They're pasted onto stop signs, onto mailboxes, onto buildings, and that's how people advertise for their own small businesses. So what Max does is he goes around and he sees pathetic advertisements. For instance, there was one for a handyman named William. And basically, it's just his business card reproduced a million times, hoping that someone will come and just rip a piece of it off and take it for a handyman. What Max did is he took all the information from there and made this elaborate, wonderful uh, poster design with an arm, with a muscle, and a gloved hand with a tool. And uh, it says, Handyman William, he can do it. And uh, he placed all of the rest of the pertinent information there. And uh, guess what? Handyman William's business exploded. He did the same thing for Myra, who was a dog walker. And she had a picture of her holding the dogs, but it was really unprofessional and wasn't really communicating well. But he gave it a makeover, and soon her business, and not only her, her dog walking business, but her secondary business of babysitting also exploded because of the Myra brand that was created. And there was a bunch of sisters who had a little this is called the clean team, again, with a really kind of basic, simple, easy to overlook poster. And he created this beautiful, dynamic picture of the clean team as like superhero Avengers, ready to get to work. And again, that business was thriving. We also need a new branding. And in fact, St. Paul knows that. And in the second lesson that Sandy read for us, we are reminded that we are a new creation. God has rebranded us because it's no longer us and the brand of Eric, but it's the brand of Christ that matters. You see, all of us, through our baptism, have been called and brought forward to continue the glorious work of Jesus. Work that is impossible for us to do on our own, 
but work that is absolutely possible for us to do in Christ. Because God, just as God works in these surprising ways through nature, God works through us to bring about new life for others. And we don't need to rebrand ourselves. We don't need to get that new car, the new suit, the new watch. We don't need the new residence. We just need to remember the truth and be renewed in that truth that we are God's beloved children, powerful and equipped to do God's work in the world. To be like the tree that provides the space of protection for the most vulnerable in our society. To be like the boulder that shields those who are weak and who are victims of injustice. So that they may grow and thrive also instead of being eradicated and destroyed. It's that restorative work, that protective work of God that is then entrusted to us as God's children. It is truly, truly amazing. In the book, Sorry, 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 the argument for a good apology, the uh, author of that reminds the people of uh, this uh, one man. His name was Chad Michael Morissette. Now, Chad was bullied horribly when he was in middle school for being gay, for being small. And uh, one day he's on social media and he gets a message from a person that was horrible to him when he was in middle school. And the message said, Hi, you probably don't remember me, Chad, but I am one of the students that was very cruel to you. He said, I'm writing you now because I'm teaching my 10-year-old daughter about bullies, and my daughter asked me, Dad, did you ever bully anyone? So he said, I know that I cannot take back what I did in the past. Because what is done is done. But it is my duty to apologize to you. And I do sincerely mean it. Well, Chad was shaken to his core. It brought back all sorts of trauma for him. And it took him days to respond. But when he did, he said, I forgive you. Your apology is accepted. I hope that you are able to tell your daughter that you apologize. And I hope that you stand up to bullies forever in the future. You see, when we believe that we are a new creation with infinite potential in Christ, we can be courageous enough to examine our past and to seek the forgiveness that is necessary, to apologize for the wrongs that we caused, to be part of God's restorative justice, to allow God's work to happen. We can find the courage to be truthful, for the sake of all of creation. Now, I don't know how that affected Chad later on. The book doesn't, doesn't tell you. But for Chad, it did give him some peace. But he said, you know, in the more than 20 years since his bullying, that this one gentleman was the only one that came forward but it meant the world to him. As new 
creations in Christ. We are blessed with the opportunity to continue that restorative justice, not only for our own wrongs, but for the wrongs of our whole human race. We can fix the problems by admitting truth and allowing God's love to fill in the cracks and provide the fertilizer and the growth. Jesus talks about the mustard seed. It's not the smallest seed. There's smaller seeds. The point was, though, that it's a surprise to people that this little seed becomes so useful and so big. And what it does is it provides shelter, provides communal life, and gives hope to all those birds that have many predators that are seeking them out. We as people, as a church, are that seed with infinite potential to provide respite for others, hospitality to others, hope to others, healing for others. And God will do that with us and through us if we just ask God to. If we fight against it, which we can, God will allow us to fight against it. Because God gave us free will. But even if we don't participate, God's will will be done. And the earth will be healed. But wouldn't it be so much better if we were all part of that healing and part of that rebirth? part of that beautiful, beautiful, restorative love. I think so. Amen.
Together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sit for the prayers. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Nourish your faithful people through gifts of word and worship. Guide the church in listening to and interpreting your message of grace for this time and place. In your wisdom, Lead us in expanding the reach of your love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Nature sings your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Sustain the holy rhythms of creation, days and seasons, hibernation and activity, phases of the moon, tides of the sea. Let these patterns assure us of your constancy. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You raise the lowly and humble those in high regard. Raise up all who are victims of marginalization, discrimination, and hate. As we anticipate Juneteenth, banish white supremacy and bigotry from the hearts of your people and remove the inclination towards anger and violence. We pray especially for a just peace in Gaza, Ukraine, Haiti, Myanmar, and in the more than 15 war-torn areas in Africa. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Tend to all who journey by faith and who wait with patience for the fulfillment of your healing promises. Grant perseverance to people doing physical and occupational therapy, people living with mobility concerns, and people facing chronic pain. Be with all who struggle, especially those on our prayer list, and those we name before you now, aloud, or in our hearts. Ken, Lauren, Steve, Becky, Megan. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. As you have loved us, so let us love one another. Empower fathers, stepfathers, grandfathers, adopted fathers, and chosen fathers to embody this gift of love for their children. Where these relationships are strained or broken, bring your comfort and peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With gratitude, we remember the Emmanuel Nine Martyrs and all the saints who are now at home with you, especially Walla, Wally Pina. Plant seeds of their wisdom and witness in our hearts that we may grow in faith until we join them in your heavenly dwelling. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for all fathers, for all those who acted as paternal and uh, protective mentors to us. We ask that we would also, in your fashion, that we would serve as safe paternal mentors as we are called to do so. Help us to remember that our potential is not based on our own doing or efforts or intellect or even the amount of faith that we have, but it has everything to do with your goodness and your will being done. We ask that we would be open and accept your love and direction, 
May we be your servants in the world and may we transform this world so that it resembles your kingdom. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Those who are able, I invite you to rise. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share Christ's peace with one another this Lord's Day. Peace be with you, Sandy. Peace, Ron. Peace of the Lord be with you, David. <laughs> Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather, gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, the body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. 
We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we ask you to mercifully accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and these, your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people, and given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Gathered together into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Behold, in Christ all things are new. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Lamb of God, 
invite the congregation to please rise. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have received, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask for. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. We ask this in the name we pray. Amen. Now receive a blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.
there's 23 people in here. Yeah.